So this is this is like a Hitchhawk thing. We're not going to talk about what's in the bag yet. Um, we'll go in a second. So Dominique and Pat, we'll have you guys introduce yourself because you can do a better job of telling people what you do than I can. Dominique, you do what for a living? Ballet dancer. No, I'm kidding. Um, I'm a chef. I live in San Francisco. Um, I have two restaurants in San Francisco. I just cook food, delicious food. You are a world famous chef. You are a two Michelin star chef. You are uh, recently named the best female chef in America, which I think is a compliment, right? In America, in the world. In the world, <laughs> excuse me. Um, you gave us a video that, that describes briefly what you do. Why don't we show people that just to give people a sense of what you're doing. You guys want to roll that for a second? Can I call that an amuse bouche? Is that right? Yes. It's a taste. If you want more of that, there's a uh, you're on Netflix starting this week. Last week. Last week. Yes. Full hour of you. So you guys should watch that when you're done talking. Yeah, you about guys this. should watch that. Yes. Um, hi, Pat. You're Pat Brown. Yeah. Do something entirely yeah. different. Why don't you tell people what that is? But related. Um, well, right now, um, I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Impossible Foods. Uh, the mission of the company is to uh, replace the most destructive technology in the world, which is the use of animals uh, as a system for turning plants into meat and fish and dairy products, um, by making the best meats and fish and dairy foods in the world directly from plants. You are making fake meat today. Well, we're making uh, meat for meat lovers, uncompromising meat lovers, that uh, we believe will deliver without any compromise on everything that meat lovers crave, but uh, with a fraction of the environmental impact, about one-tenth of the greenhouse gas impact, about a tenth of the water usage, and uh, about less than 5% of the land footprint of uh, making the same products from animals. So, um, but without compromising on taste. And we're going to be serving it at dinner tonight, so I hope everyone will challenge me on this by trying our first product, which is a delicious burger, and uh, letting me know what you think. So you guys can do a taste test tonight at dinner. In the meantime, do you want to show people what this stuff looks like? Because it's, it's quite startling. Oops, OK. So this is uh, frozen. Um, but uh, this is the raw burger. And I'll just say that, you know, it, to, to achieve our goal, we knew that um, food is so important to people, uh, they are really not willing to compromise on any of the pleasures that it gives them, uh, or very few people are. And so we had to um, deliver, we had to produce a product that met exacting, exacting specifications in every interaction with the consumer, including how it looks and handles in the raw form, how it sizzles and uh, generates aromas when it's cooking, uh, the, the texture, the juiciness, and most importantly, the flavor. And that's why, if you look at it, it looks like raw ground beef and cooks like it and actually tastes like it if you want to eat and it. And the idea is you're going to start off by s serving this ideally, uh, hopefully, in high-end restaurants. Dominique, would you sell something? Would you sell this in your restaurant? Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I was talking to... Um, um, to Pat, yet, I mean, yesterday, and, and I, I tested his product before. It, so he says this tastes just like meat. Do you well, agree? Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting. I mean, I'm in a business where I, you know, I cook food every day, and I, um, the way that I cook food is, um, first of all, I think before cooking, for sure, but I'm also, I'm looking for texture, I'm looking for test. I'm looking for uh, also the emotion that the food give me and the way that it cook. And um, what it's doing is pretty outstanding. I'm not vegan, I'm not vegetarian, but I'm conscious that if we want to go a um, different way, 
the, the world is scrambling, the world is, um, um, I mean, climate change is real. Um, I was telling him the other day that I think 40 and 50% of the food production in the world contribute to climate change. Um, the way that we're going to have to move forward is to really think about the way we eat and the way that we produce food. So, and this is, this is an incredible um, a way to do it. You don't have to be vegan or vegetarian, but you have to be conscious and thoughtful about where you want to go. Is there food that you won't serve in your restaurant because you don't like the environmental impact? I do. Um, you know, I opened the second, um, uh, the second uh, uh, restaurant called Petit Crane uh, because I was very thoughtful and conscious and I was very angry with the meat industry. There's no meat product in, this, in the restaurant that I opened because I was like, I can't do this. This is, this is crazy. There is, I mean, I was reading, you know, yesterday that they kill, I think there is 20,000 cow a day that been slaughtered every day in the United States. I mean, just, just, just do the math. This is not normal. Because some chefs that do what you do in very high-end restaurants will say, well, we still want to serve meat, but we're going to make sure that the meat or whatever it is that we serve is sourced a very specific way and, and, and the animal is grass-fed and I'm not being flip here, but we know its name or whatever it is. And so it's, it's raised humanely and we're being very thoughtful about it, but we're still going to serve meat. And you're saying we just don't want to do it, period. I'm not saying this. I think, I think we have to go, um, uh, we can't change the world tomorrow. And I think that perhaps that might be the solution, but also what I'm asking is people to be conscious and maybe least, eat less meat, but they need to know what they're doing. You know, when you go to a restaurant or you go to buy uh, something at the market, the dollar that you're going to spend, you've got to be thoughtful about where that money goes. You've got to know where things come from. If you don't know, then that dollar is going to impact the right way or the wrong way. But to be clear, when I go to your restaurant, I go there because I'm going to be served amazing food. You're not saying amazing this is sustainable food, yes. and we're going to help the earth. You're saying, come eat amazing food with me. And by the way, it's not bad for the earth. I will never advertise that my restaurant, I mean, it's organic, it's sustainable, I'm very thoughtful, but this is not what I, I'm, I'm going to cook. I want to cook great food. It's, it's underlining. It's, 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 it has a better impact for me. And. Um, I don't know, I, I just want to challenge everyone and invite everyone, you know, in this audience, you know, when they go eat somewhere or they cook food, you know, at home, it's just, they need to think. We need to rethink, you know, this is recode. We need to rethink about the way that we are doing and eating food in the world. And I think is, I mean, obviously, animals are incredible and maybe, maybe this is the way to go. So I'm a chef that said that we have the responsibility to do this. And food is the core of the society. And if the, the, the food is not the way it should be, then the society, the society is going to scramble, which is doing in a lot of places right now. And, and Pat, why did you do this? Because you want to help the earth? Or do you do this because you want to make money and this is one way to do it? Or <laughs> somewhere in between? Uh, no, it was, I got into this not thinking that it was going to wind up being a commercial endeavor. Uh, I, had, I, was doing, I was on my sabbatical at Stanford. I'd been a professor in the medical school for 25 years. I wasn't looking for another gig because I had the best job in the world. And I was never interested, to be honest, in going into business. Um, but um, I wanted to pick the most important problem in the world to work on. I decided that without question, the biggest threat to um, the global environment right now is the use of animals for food. And I thought it was a solvable problem uh, but, the, but the solution involved um, starting a business because the only way you're going to do this is by uh, basically a market-based approach uh, and that entails creating a food that outperforms what's on the market and that's how you change the system. Um, so that's a, so that, that was the genesis of this thing. It was Because there's another approach to this, right? Or there's another approach to, to creating new kinds of food that's popular, at least discussed in Silicon Valley. It's the Soylent approach, right? Mm -hmm. Which is food is, thinking about food is a waste of time. Mm -hmm. um, doing anything other than just putting the necessary calories into your body is mm -hmm. a waste of time. Yeah. So have this goo, eat it, and move on. Yeah. Um, but we were talking before, that, that, that appeals to you, right? Like, well, I mean, uh, uh, you know, in, in, in my life, for most of my life, um, 
convenience and speed and just getting the nutrition in was most of what food was about. You're a Soylent guy. You could be a Soylent guy. I could have, I, I could have been, I'm not a coder, which is the core demographic of Soylent, but I, I could otherwise have, have been. But, um, but anyway, for the vast majority of people, um, food is a huge part of the pleasure of life. Um, and uh, and it's, it's, it's so important to their quality of life. It's not just nutrition, it's pleasure. And um, so some people will, will you know, lo like Soylent uh, as a soul food source, but it's a tiny fraction of the world. I mean, bless their hearts, but that's just the reality. Uh, so you have to deliver on the pleasure of eating uh, or you know, people aren't going to be interested. Dominique, have you ever tried Soylent? Uh, no, it doesn't sound like it. No. You, you've probably tried, though. I assume other folks like Pat have come to you and said, I have a new mystery meat, a new wonder product. It's going to be like meat, but better, or like fish, but better. Have you tried other stuff like this? Um, I did try A stuff. Yeah. And it's, um, it's pretty amazing. Um, yeah, there were some people that, I mean, I, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's quite interesting. Um, always interested when people um, come up with idea and, and product and maybe maybe to change the way that we eat. But also I'm, I'm, sometimes I'm, I'm worried about the way they produce those food, you know. Um, I think the, you know, when I think about the vegan and the vegetarian market, I think it's like, I don't know how many, how much? Tiny. I mean, ton, right? Uh, it's, it's I mean, the, uh, I think it's, Effectively, single digits, low single digit percent of of you know the population. So um, so there is a lot of company now that create those product, you know. But I'm worried sometimes because the way they create they create those product, you look at the ingredient and it's not even healthy for you. So if someone want to go that way, we need to really put a mind together and really from A to Z. And everything needs to be thought out. Not just like, hey, I'm going to do vegan and it's just like, you have this and this and you don't know where that thing. You want to know what's in the fake meat. Yes, you have to. It's, it's very important. You know, I go to, you know, you go to the market and you go, you get a, a strawberry, a organic strawberry. What is the package? The package is plastic. What is the implication of this? So when you think about a product, you need to think about the old product in itself and the packaging, because that implication, that implication is going to make a difference. It's not about eating this, just a strawberry. It's about thinking about where you're going to, what you're going to do with that plastic package. Pat, what's, what's, what's in the meat? What's in the mystery meat? Um, well, first of all, there's no artificial ingredients. And I'll say that you know, we're, we're a company that is primarily about our mission. Obviously, our mission is perfectly aligned with business success. But um, one of our core values is that we're never going to create a product that we don't believe is better for the consumer than what it replaces. And we're also going to be completely transparent about what's in our product. Uh, so all, there are no animal ingredients. Uh, the major plant sources of proteins are uh, wheat, potato, uh, soy, and uh, yeast. Um, the major fat source is coconut. Um, we have a few, um, we have a couple of uh, plant-derived soluble fibers uh, and, uh, and then micronutrients. But you're not also shoving this stuff into a vat and grounding it up and turning it into fake patties, right? You're breaking it down and taking out different molecules. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not like a garden burger. We're, so, you know, we, um, when we started, when I started the company, I realized this is an incredibly hard thing to do. We, have, we really do not know how to do it. I knew it was doable. I didn't know how we were going to do it. Um, and we built uh, an R&D team that was 80 people by the time anyone three years into our life, anyone had heard of us. Um, 80 of the best scientists in the world, and I'm not kidding. These are people who um, could have had jobs in universities or um, the best biotech companies and so forth, but they believed in our mission and joined us. And we did that because, um, again, you're not going to make anything that appeals to a hardcore meat lover by mushing together a bunch of vegetables. And so we had to do a very deep, <coughs> systematic, you know, sort of molecular level characterization of what it is about the foods that we want to make. 
you know, meet, say, uh, that accounts for the desirable properties, the, you know, the texture, the juiciness, how it cooks, um, the aromas it generates, all that kind of stuff. And, um, and then very deliberately uh, find um, sustainable, scalable, affordable uh, plant sources for the necessary ingredients. But, you, but you're building this in a lab, and so what I wanted to get to was the notion we're not, that- we're, we, we, we used a lab to discover how to do this, to understand what we need, the problems we needed to solve in order to make this product. We're not producing it in a lab, and actually, I would say, unlike the competition, the meat industry, uh, we can be very transparent about how our burger is created um, it's in a, you know, GMP food safe food production facility. So you don't think you're going to get pushback from people who might go to Dominique's restaurant, who might get food from a CSA or go to the farmer's market, and the idea that they think they're getting something locally sourced, and your thing is produced by a company um, that they've never heard of before, and they're buying a box be of it. It's not from I, me. No, you're, you're in. Yeah, you're I'm in. Gonna, but yeah. I'm just wondering if... if we, there I are think people that, who, are, who are concerned about anything that involves science and food. They get freaked out by that notion. Well, I mean, as you know, and I think this audience knows that, you know, uh, the entire history of food has been sort of nature combined with human ingenuity, and, um, and it's hard to find a food in the food system that isn't a product of that. I mean, bread, you know, isn't just something that falls off a plant. And... Uh, food is science. It's, it's yeah, and so... Um, but I, but I realize that there is kind of a, a segment of the population that has sort of a, a, a deep science phobia, and it's particularly prominent in food. Um, we have really not encountered that as uh, a problem. We, you know, we've served our product to thousands of people. Uh, it's, there are people who are, have that concern. I think it's the fact that we're transparent about what we're doing, the fact that we're not trying to create this product as a way to kind of rip off our consumer by shoving a bunch of junk in there and taking out the nutrition, but we're so deliberate about making it healthy and nutritious uh, and sustainable, I think should you know, alleviate a lot, of, a lot of those concerns. Dominic, let me ask about the business of being a famous chef. Um, there's now a, this, the idea of a famous chef was a, was a foreign idea a couple years ago. Now it's pretty common. Usually someone with your stature has one or two sort of high-end restaurants, and then at some point you find out some way to franchise it or create Vegas outposts, and then maybe a, a low price thing. Does that appeal to you? No. Not at all? Um, well, the thing is, is um, I think in our industry we're very lucky because now we, we, we have a voice. And, um, you know, being a celebrity is, um, it's, it's, it's what you do with it. It's a platform is you can go a two way, you can, you know, hey, I'm a chef and I'm, I'm a rock star, I'm a celebrity and I don't care about anything, just myself. Or, well, I have a platform and people start to pay attention of what I'm saying, so what do you do with it? So for me, it's a platform and... and what do you want to do with that platform? What, what message do you want to get out to the folks in this audience? Well, I mean, I just, um, I want people to think. I want people to think together, you know, I mean, our industry, I mean, I talk, I mean, this is the number one industry in the world. The tech company is not number one in the world. The food industry is the number one industry in the world. And we need, you know, people like you and other people to be able to, um, to evolve and, and to continue to better you know, this, this, this planet, you know, it's just, we're destroying everything and ecosystem and because I'm serving food every day, I get to think that everything that I do has an impact. So my platform is to invite people to uh, be conscious, uh, to inspire and be inspired and also to continue to find ways of, of better the planet and make the planet a better place to live that it's not, it's not about me per se today, but what about the next generation? What about our kids? You know, we're not going to be here, but we have to do things to make sure they have a great life and they have a great place to be. So Let me ask you both about money. Your, your, your restaurants are not cheap. Your meat is not going to be cheap when it comes out. You said it's going to be roughly the price of organic beef when it comes out. So everyone here can afford that stuff. 
um, a lot of people can't. How important is it for you to take whatever you're selling and make it more accessible to many people with less money? Well, uh, I mean, um, oh, with a restaurant, I have two restaurants. One is Atelier Crain and the other one is Petit Crain. I mean, it's, it's, you can go, go to Atelier Crain and get 20 courses for 200 something. It's, 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 it's okay. It's, well, it's an experience, you know. I'd like to go. <laughs> Um, but you, but it's, you're, not, you're not serving $4 hamburgers. No, but uh, you can go to Petit Crane and you can, you know, eat for less than $25. Right. But, but you get that. I mean, I'm not asking you to, to make fast food or to make food that's widely available. But do you think about how can I do what I'm doing and, and reach many more people who have, oh, money, definitely. Who have a lot less money? Definitely. I'm, I'm, I'm working right now on an idea where I do want to do plant based. My, I had an idea five years ago. Um, it would be an in and out plant based, you know, place. Um, I know in and out is, you know, but I, I like the way they think. I like the way, you know, the color, the uh, and how people, you know, can have the idea of, of what a burger place is, a fast food. But I want to do this, but in, in, in more like plant based, but like maybe four, five bucks per person, five dollars, and and reach. I want this to be open all over the world. So I know it's ambitious, but I'm ambitious, so and I will yeah. do it. So, um, oh, I'll well, ask, ask Pat the question, and I'll ask you one more question, Pat. Uh, how, when is this About stuff going to be cheap as 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 supermarket beef? Um, yeah. So when we're launching, obviously we're at a small scale. We don't have the economies of scale. Um, we expect, just based on our projections, and we're certainly on that trajectory, that uh, in a couple of years uh, we should be able to sell our product profitably at a price that's on par with supermarket ground beef. And uh, obviously, both for our mission of um, replacing animals as a food technology, uh, we're not going to succeed unless our product is not only delicious but affordable. But also, um, part of our mission, just more broadly, is improving the food system. There are still almost a, a billion people in the world who are um, have protein malnutrition, uh, mostly in Africa and South Asia. Almost two billion who are have clinically significant iron deficiency. And um, addressing their nutritional needs by expanding animal farming. You want this to be mass, mass, mass market. I want I want this to be extremely affordable. At, at a level where people in the developing world, as well as in the developed so world, can, Google can use it as a Google was reportedly resource. interested in buying you guys. I believe that report. Google's got enormous resources. If you want to change the world, why not sell your company to Google and have them bankroll this? Um, well, in a nutshell, I bless their hearts. I, 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 I don't have anything bad to say about Google. But um, we're a mission-driven company. And uh, Google has a lot of interests. We don't want our, um, we want to have control of our fate. We don't want our success to be dependent on the continuing willingness of a company that's trying to do a million different things to uh, support it as it needs. And so, um, yeah, so it, it, it made no sense for us to be acquired by anyone at this stage um, because we need to be able to control our, our fate. I have a question for Dominique. Well, let's see if we have questions from the audience first. Looks like we've got someone here. Hi, Jonathan Kaplan, um, made grilled cheese yep. for everybody here. And hi, Dominique. And hi, hi, Pat. How are you doing? So my question um, really uh, is around what obstacles still exist um, in the process of bringing your product to market. Can you talk just a little bit about whether it's just operational now at this point, or is there still science that you're trying to solve? Because obviously, with the mission of trying to uh, bring healthy food to our country, and that's what the melt is trying to do, and food that kids love. Um, you know, we would love to have a meat-based substitute to make our cheeseburgers out of. That'd be awesome, especially one that's more nutritious and 100% natural. So, just curious about, um, you know, what obstacles are left. Well, in, in terms of uh, our larger mission, I'd say um, we're just barely getting started. We're, this is our first product. We have other, other products in the pipeline, uh, other kinds of meat, fish, dairy foods, and stuff like that, that we're not going to launch commercially until we've successfully launched our first product, obviously. 
but we're working hard on them. And the second thing, I think and this is something that's really fundamental about uh, what we're doing, understanding what we're doing, and that is that, think of, here's, here's the analogy. 200 years ago, if I asked you what the future of transportation looks like, you'd say the horses would be faster. And they're not, but it doesn't matter. Because, you know, 180 years ago, uh, the first commercial mechanized transportation was running even with a horse. But it kept getting better because it was improvable on every axis. Right now, um, you know, the cow is not going to get any better at making meat. Um, and literally, we get better at it every day. We learn more about how to do it, and uh, we improve and improve and improve. And even for the first product that we launch, and you can decide how good it is now, uh, it's going to be better next month and still better the month after, far into the future. So that's one of the, like, one of the fundamental things about switching from an unimprovable technology to a technology that's improvable on every axis, you know, flavored, cost, scalability, sustainability, and so forth. Um, so we have a lot of other products that our, our technology platform wasn't built for the burger. It was built to give us the capability of making anything in this category. And we chose the burger as our first product for strategic reasons, which I think are probably obvious to you. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's going to be an ongoing process. Obstacles, I'd say my biggest concern is scaling. Um, just the ground beef market in the US alone uh, is 10 billion pounds a year. You, Americans consume 10 billion pounds of ground beef a year. That's a lot of stuff. And uh, you know, with, uh, with software, you know, you, scaling is a total non-issue. Uh, with um, physical stuff, it's, it's, it's more of a challenge. Um, but we're spending a lot of time thinking about strategies that are optimized for being able to scale quickly and uh, you know, in a capital efficient way as possible because we want to have a very fast impact. The thing we're trying to address really, you know, we could talk offline about it. it's urgent. I feel like we're, we're, we're at a point where we're seriously getting close to um, a situation where we're not going to know how to fix things. And uh, so for me, it's like, it's really important that we can scale fast, and that's, that's always a challenge. Speed, urgency. We have a quick question here. Can humans survive without eating animal protein? Oh, yeah, there, that's it. That's, Dominique says yes. Thank you for that yes. question. Says yes. A very, uh, yeah, absolutely. Of course, there are, there are, there are uh, you know, many hundreds of millions of people who have survived without eating animal protein. Um, and, uh, and there's been a lot of scientific research on this. So, Pat, we're going to leave yeah. it there because they're telling us to leave. But yeah, I want to ask Dominique one last question. I asked you in the beginning, you're the best female chef in the US, and you said, no, the world. Is being called the best female chef in the world a compliment, or is that derogatory? Well, I think is in our world is a beginning and a start of a conversation, you know, is, you know, I, it's a platform. Now they want to call me female chef, so now it's for me to speak up, say, well, yeah, okay. But so you're going to accept that award? Well, yeah, but in a, in a, yes, but in a way that is, I want also people to know this is, that should not be happening. And I hope in a couple of years, it's just be a chef. It's like, it's, you know, putting female, they don't, they don't put male chef or... Right, the, you know, there's no best female director. Or the best, you know, the best male CEO. It's always, oh, she's a, she's a, She's a female CEO. I mean, it's just people need to think about this. It's like, hey, I mean, yes, we are physically different, but we have a mind and we are on the same level than you are. So I hope that the society can just like kind of do a, a switch on that. And, and it's, you know, it's for me also to speak about it. So, Great. but I want to say, yes, um, half of uh, India, for example, they're all vegetarian and they've been vegetarian forever. So you can live without. Um, a meat pot. I'm sorry. There was there was well, you, a, you a, a review published in the American Journal of Nutrition about I think four or five years ago that systematically looked at all the evidence on on this and basically it was a published the the, the their policy of this organization the American Nutritional Society or something like that and they basically their policy statement was. Um, at every stage of life, including pregnancy, uh, um, childhood, 
in athletes and so forth, uh, a entirely plant-based diet um, is, um, is healthy, as healthy, possibly healthier than the alternative. And I can give you the reference on that paper. We'll but, do it, um, let's do it outside in the hall. Dominique yeah. says yes, Pat says yes. You can, you can eat the food and test it out uh, in the tent tonight. Thank you mm -hmm. both for coming. Thanks Thank for you. serving.